welcome back to our second part of our discussion about motivation, and we're specifically talking about <clears throat> the self-determination theory. I'm kind of curious if anybody knows what artist that was. Um, just uh, to side note, that song at the beginning. Okay, so we talked about competence in the previous, and we ended with competence in that previous um, presentation. So now we're going to talk about autonomy. And as we would guess, autonomy just believes that you have um, uh, freedom to do the things that you want to do. As the says on the screen there, a belief that a person's behavior is truly imposed by them rather than exposed by some external force. And how do we do this in, an, uh, in, a, in classes? So how do we create these type of behaviors? Are there some certain strengths that might be more difficult allowing autonomous behavior? These are just uh, rhetorical questions. We're not going to answer these, but just some things to get you thinking. All right, some practical steps for creating autonomy in a course. Choice assignments, choice in assignments. Uh, I was introduced to this when I was down at Azusa Pacific, and they do things uh, a little bit different than what I'm doing with our choice assignments. They actually will have a... Uh, this is a doctoral program, and one of the things that uh, one of the professors, uh, Lori Schreiner, was talking about when we were talking about this in her class is that undergraduate students really have a hard time with choice assignments. Uh, they just don't know what to do with them. Uh, what do you mean I got a choice? Where in a master, we'll find out with the master's students because this is the first time I've had this many choices in assignment uh, than I've ever had before. I mean, I have some flexibility in assignments. Those of you who've had me in classes already um, will know that I have an assignment, and you get to choose the topic within there, which is similar to what we're doing now in this class, but I've even created more autonomy in your choice. And why do we give the choices? Because it uh, provides them um, assignments with meaning that are meaningful to you uh, and to the student. Uh, because we know that students will care more about something if they pick a topic that's uh, more interested that they're more interested in. Um, sorry, I, I, I forgot to go back to Azusa Pacific what they do in their um, choice assignments. They'll they'll have an assignment, a very uh, broad assignment that a student has to complete and has some criterion to it. But uh, what they do there is their classes are a lot different than here. Their classes are six months in length. They meet on campus for two weeks in the summer, and then during the whole rest of the year, they're in classes. They're not online. Um, they're more independent, and they'll meet online or in correspondence two or three times during the rest of that uh, six months semester, and then they come back in January for another week of classes. Um, and do a bunch of presentations. But in their choice assignments, they can choose uh, a particular area that, and direction that they want to go into that is meaningful to them. They have to write a proposal to the professor. Uh, it has to ask them to meet the criteria of the assignment. Um, so kind of hard to envision. It was hard for me to even think about how to do that in this course or even in some other courses. But I think we have some good choice assignments in this particular class. We also want to identify the things that motivates a student. Um, or is a student motivated? Um, I'm trying to think about some internal motivations for a student uh, because they need to get a new job. Or uh, To me, those are all external motivations. So what are some things that... Um, that they are internally motivated by, and maybe you can help foster that through that. Other thing we can do uh, is set, allow students to set their own clinical education goals. So if you're a preceptor for a student and that you have them for, say, a month or even if you have them for the whole uh, season, what are the type of uh, skills and behaviors that the student wants to improve on during the time that you have them with you? And then how can you help them meet those goals? Again, autonomy has given the person the freedom to choose the path that they want to go in, go down. 
our last part of uh, <clears throat> internal motivation it's a quote from DC and flask from the book what why do we want get my brain working why do why we do what we do sorry hey man that was hard People not only need to be effective and free, they also need to feel connected with others in the midst of being effective and autonomous. We call it the need for relatedness, the need to love and be loved, to care and be cared for. So to develop relatedness in classes, uh, we can develop communities of support that value the academic task. I can remember back in um, my undergraduate days, even in my doctoral program, that I had a group of others, and this would be part, you know, the relationship with significant others and peer interactions and learning ethos, all these, that the majority of the students in my athletic training education programs um, were really good students. We all wanted to learn. We all wanted to do well in our courses, and we pushed each other um, towards uh, being excellent in our courses, excellent as athletic training students, you know, on the clinical side and uh, in the, the professionalism and those type of things. So it was, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't know how it started, who started it, who was a catalyst for that. I don't know if it was the faculty or if it was the students, but it's important for us to have that connection to our school, uh, connected to our athletic training and education program, and to build that desire to want to do well, to be internally motivated to do well, not just uh, because we're being forced to do um, good in our classes. And those are all those the first three bullet points. Other one is uh, the relationship that students have with faculty can be important to them. Uh, it's, I think it's important for us as faculty to tell our students our own connection and our own story at the undergraduate level and let them know that we struggled at times and that uh, our career paths and all those type of things that so we can develop uh, a bond and we can really mentor the students so they, they feel connected to us. Our last uh, slide here is uh, continuing how we can build community in our classes. Uh, the first day sets the tone. We talked about that earlier in one of the other presentations is how we set a tone for our course. Uh, as a faculty member, the, as Bain talks about this, uh, warm language uh, promises to the student and I, I hope that you, I set that tone with you students that uh, we're here to learn together. It's not me being a disseminator, disseminator of information. It's us working together learning through this. I'm doing these presentations. Hopefully it will be helpful to you in learning how to be a better teacher. Know all the students' name by the end of the first week. Uh, Online's a little bit different. Typically, in online courses, most of all our classes will ask a question, you know, uh, where do you work? What do you do for fun? Those type of things. And it's part of building a community. One of the reasons why our program is in a cohort model is so we can build that sense of community. And so you'll know who's in your classes and hopefully you can make a connection with other students in this program uh, through the program. Uh, what are meaningful goals for our course? You know, what am I going to get out of this course? So hopefully when we design our courses that we keep in mind uh, the type of students that we'll have in our classes. And a good thing for us is uh, we're not teaching a bunch of general ed courses. We're teaching very specific courses for a specific type of student. And try to th keep the, in mind uh, the goals for a student and talk to the students in that first day of class or the first week of class and find out what their goals are for that particular course. Hey students, especially in our athletic training, they, they have some background, so uh, help them share their information. There's a thing out there right now called the Flip um, Classroom. You might want to check that out. You might want to use that for the topic. I didn't put that down for one of the 
uh, topics for the signature assignment. The flipped classroom is another way because it gets the students thinking in a different way. We use, <coughs> excuse us, excuse me. Our syllabus is a way for us to communicate uh, what we expect from students. Here's how I believe that you'll be competent in how you can be competent in this class. And here's my expectations for the student. Uh, I believe you can also put in there um, the belief that we in the student's ability to be successful. I already talked about shared personal experiences and stories. And the other one we can do is set up learning teams. This could be group work, it could be outside of the classroom. Another thing we need to realize with all this is when we're teaching, uh, we have to, when we set up our uh, lesson plans, which we'll talk about next week, is that coursework takes place in a classroom and outside of a classroom. So we have to build those learning teams that foster a sense of community. And that includes us, especially in a, in a traditional classroom um, where we, we can build um, learning teams with the faculty, with you, in a clinical environment. That's the nice thing about us um, in our type of teaching environments that it's, it can be pretty easy to do that because we can see the students daily in the clinic and uh, say, hey, you remember the other day we we're talking about in class this, that, and the other, and you can continue to build that learning outside of a class. And I hope this has been helpful for us to understand how to uh, internally motivate students, how to design our courses to be internally motivated, for the students to be internally motivated.